Good morning. morning. Welcome to Victory Memorial. Your announcements for today. Friendship Circle will meet tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the Clothing Ministry to work. Grace Circle will meet Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the parlor. Trustees will meet Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the archives room. The Maundy Thursday worship service will take place this Thursday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Church office is closed this Friday in observance of Good Friday. Ashley said, woohoo! <laughs> Ashley's still saying woohoo. <laughs> Good Friday worship service will take place this Friday at 7 in the sanctuary. 24 hour prayer vigil. This will take place this Friday through Saturday beginning at 8 p.m. Friday night. Sign ups are in the back of the sanctuary or can be found using the attached QR code or on our Facebook page. You can come up and pray here in the sanctuary or pray at your home. Easter sunrise service will take place Easter Sunday morning at 7 a.m. on the west side of Sunset Lake. That's late for you. Yes, and make sure you dress warm because it's going to be cold again. Again. <laughs> Easter lilies. We once again will decorate the sanctuary on Easter morning with lilies, and we are inviting you to purchase one in memory or in honor of a loved one to help us. Have them to the church office no later than this Thursday by 4 p.m. We will print a list of those honored in the Sunday Bulletin after Easter. Ladies Bible Study will be starting a new six-week study this Wednesday at 6 p.m., Thursday at 10 a.m., called God's Relentless Love for You by Jennifer Cowart. It'll show us that throughout the Bible, God passionately pursues people who do not deserve his love, people like us. We would love for you to come be a part of our group and to share in fellowship and devotion. Methodist Men's Breakfast, every Wednesday morning, 6.30 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Invite a friend and join them for good food, fellowship, and devotion. Early Watch Prayer Group <laughs> meets for fellowship, worship, and intercession Monday through Saturday mornings, 5 to 6 a.m. in the chapel. Come and join them when you can. Yes. Daily Devotions. Pastor Dave encourages everyone to enjoy a quiet time with God each day. Pastoral visitation. We want to be a church family where you're known, loved, and supported. Pastor Dave is committed to visiting each family of our church. This can be at your home or in his home or at a restaurant. Please let him know when a good day and time will be to visit with your family. Uh, there will be no children's church this morning. The kids can be in the sanctuary and enjoy the cantata. God is good. And all the time, that's good. No call to worship. Call to worship, so come. Okay. No call to worship. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Steve and Carrie Long. We have gathered here week after week, sharing a common quest for a deeper faith and a deeper experience of God. The time is drawing near. Jesus is preparing to enter Jerusalem. How will we greet him? Will we follow him all the way to the cross? The power of Jesus is that he lived what he taught, even when it led to his death. Yes. He lived with an abiding awareness of God, radiating the light of God in all that he said and did. There are forces in this world that conspire to put out that light. Let us pray. Loving God, there are so many choices before us every day. Choices offered by our friends, our families, our culture, our own past. Some of them encourage the well-being of the earth, ourselves and our neighbors. Others are destructive. Help us to distinguish between them. May we learn from the choices of Jesus, embody compassion, justice, and inclusion in all we say and do. Amen. Let's all stand together and sing, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus.
You may be seated. A warm welcome to each one of you on this Palm Sunday as we begin another Holy Week. You know about a third of the gospel stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all focus on this week. Holy Week is the most important week in the life of Jesus and certainly in our faith as believers, as Jesus goes to Jerusalem and finally lays down his life for us. So welcome to the start of another Holy Week. We're going to ask our ashes to come forward. We're going to receive tithe, offering, and faith promise gifts today. One of the things I love about our church is we have a family, an extended family that stretches all throughout the panhandle and far beyond. And uh, when people return who've been a part of us, it's always such a joy. Yesterday, especially in our wedding that we had here, we saw so many who had been a part of our church who were returning for that celebration. And what a joy to have Ashley with us this morning as we celebrate worship together. We claim those who have been a part of us, even if they move somewhere else, they're a part of our family. Our stewardship reflection this morning comes out of 1 Chronicles chapter 29. King David wanted to build God a house, a temple, and he had dreamed about that, and then finally God told him, you're not the person to build it. So David gathered all the materials, he dreamed about it, he planned it, he got everything ready and this text comes right near the end when he's getting all of that stuff ready for his son Solomon to take over. Listen to what this text tells us this morning. Ready and willing, the heads of the families, leaders of the tribes of Israel, commanders and captains in the army, stewards of the king's affairs, stepped forward and gave willingly. They gave 5,000 talents, 188 tons, and 10,000 derricks, 185 pounds of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 377 tons, 18,000 talents of bronze, 679 tons, and 100,000 talents, 3,775 tons of iron. Anyone who had precious jewels put them in the treasury for the building of the temple of God in the custody of Jehiel, the Gershonite, and the people were full of a sense of celebration, all that giving, and all given willingly, freely. King David was exuberant. Let us pray. Lord, we want to be such people. May it never be that you've got to twist our arms to serve you, or to give, or even to sacrifice. May we be those who respond out of deep gratitude and joy to all you are and all you've done for us. It is out of your own generosity that you have given to us that we return something to you. As we give today of tithe, of offering and faith promise gifts, Lord, we want to see your kingdom grow. We want to see your will accomplished. Bless the gift, bless the giver. We pray it in the strong name of Jesus. And everybody said... Amen.
you stand with me this morning and let us sing our doxology? Pray. may be seated. If our children will come forward, we will have a children's moment together. The sign... glad to see each one of you come on come on come on Tinley I want you to know this morning when I saw your mom and dad in Sunday school I said wow you made it I said who brought you Berkeley she said no Tindley said time to get up come to church Woohoo! God bless Tindley they got to bed early hours of this morning after the reception after the wedding yesterday so glad to see you boy there's a lot of conversation going on Listen now, McCoy, Marshall, listen. If you had one wish, if I could grant you your wish, what would you wish for? Mom's coming. Yeah, the mamas are coming. <laughs> if you could have one wish, what would it be? If I could grant you one wish, something you want or something you'd want to become, what would it be? A ballerina. A ballerina. Another two. If you get one wish, what would it be? Something special. Huh? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Anybody? If you had a wish and I could grant it. Hmm? To go to church. To go to church. Woohoo! That's a great answer. Emma, if you had one wish, what would it be? Oh, money. Money. <laughs> she works hard for her money. So hard. Listen. We know the stories about genies who rub the, the lamp and out pops a genie and he gives you how many wishes? Three. Three. Well, listen now. When Jesus came into Jerusalem and the people welcomed him, those people, those people wanted, wanted things from God. They were wishing. They were hoping. They were struggling. Now listen. Good, good, good. Let's sit down. We're all good. Good, 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 good. So listen now. It's hard for us to realize. Listen. Have any of you heard about the war in the Ukraine? Anybody heard about that? You know what's happening in the Ukraine? Yeah. Bombs. Bullets. Homes are being bl blown up. It's chaos. There's a terrible war going on. Now, in some way, it was similar in, in Israel. The Romans had conquered Israel. They were there. They had to, all the Israelites had to do what the Romans told them. If not, they'd be arrested or killed. Life was a big mess in Israel. And the people had all kinds of wishes and dreams. And when Jesus came in, guess what they thought? God has heard our prayer. God is going to get rid of the Romans. He's going to bring peace back to Israel. Life is going to be good. But it wasn't quite what they thought. God had a bigger plan. God was going to save the world. And Jesus wasn't going to be a general unleashing all kinds of war and destruction. He was going to lay down his life and save us. Nobody expected that. I don't think one of the people that welcomed him thought he was coming to die. But he did. So I tell you this morning, you have wishes and you have dreams, but they aren't always exactly what God has in mind. Don't be surprised if God's dreams and wishes are different from yours. They're bigger and better. So when you brought the palm, uh, palm branches in today, remember that God sent us a wonderful Savior and He is saving people even today, even in the Ukraine, even here in Gaiman, America. 
and we can all say, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, sometimes we have wishes and dreams that are different from yours. And I pray that each one of us will hear your voice, will trust you, will enjoy this wonderful salvation that cost Jesus his life. We give you thanks today for another holy week as we celebrate the greatest gift that ever came to earth, your Son, our Savior. And all the children said, Amen. Amen. There'll be candy at the end of worship for each one of you. We love you. God bless you. So glad to see you in worship with us. Today you're in for a special blessing. Our choir has worked hard to put together the gospel in the form of a cantata that has narration and special music. I pray that you will hear the gospel loudly and clearly today. The cross of Christ is an eternal reminder of God's unconditional love. This day we stand in the shadow of the cross and we gratefully remember. I come to the cross seeking mercy and grace. I come to the cross where you died in my place. Out of my weakness and into your strength, humbly I come to the cross. I come to the cross. 
It was the first day of unleavened bread, and the disciples came to Jesus asking, Where do you want us to make the preparations for the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to observe the Passover with my disciples at your house. The disciples did as Jesus had instructed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table surrounded by his disciples. He said to them, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He then took a cup and after giving thanks said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He then took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did the same with the cup, saying, This cup poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Remember me. While still at the table with his disciples, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. In despair, they began to say to him one after the other, Oh, surely it is not I, Lord. Jesus answered, 
the one who dips his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Woe to that one who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for that one if he had not been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Oh, surely not I, Rabbi. And Jesus replied, Yes, it is you. Later that evening, Jesus told his followers, This very night you will all become deserters. But Peter declared, Even if all the others fall away, I will never desert you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to Peter, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve you till the end. Be forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle. If you are by my side, nor wander from the pathway, if you will be my guide. Jesus and his disciples went to a place called Gethsemane where he said to them, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him and began to be deeply troubled. I am overwhelmed with sorrow, even to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee I give thee back the life I owe that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer fuller be
Followest all my way. I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart restores its borrowed ray. That in thine sunshine's blaze its day may brighter fare. from his place of prayer to find his di disciples sleeping. Get up, he said to them, for my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs. Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came here to do. Immediately they stepped forward and seized Jesus. He said to the crowd, Have you come with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the courts of the temple teaching, and yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place so that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. The crowd took Jesus to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. A servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, said, This man is with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A while later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter replied, Man, I am not. 
About an hour later, still another asserted, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But he said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then he remembered the words of Jesus. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. This is a story of long ago. About a man who owned a little store. And I was mighty proud to have my name up over the door. It was some 2,000 years ago, as I recall. Lo located in Jerusalem, across the street from Pilate's Hall. I had about everything I thought I'd ever need, and folks would come from miles around, regardless of their creed. The only thing I had that I didn't think I'd probably ever sell was on a shelf in a corner. Three old rusty spike nails. Then one day, a big Roman soldier came through the door. He walked up to me, and it seemed he shook the floor. He looked at me with a sneery grin and said, I need to buy some big, big nails. Well, three old rusty spikes is all I have, sir. He said, for me, that'll do. For the job I have, three's enough. Now, how much do I owe you? Well, he placed the money in my hand, and I was glad to make the sale. And then I wondered, I said, sir, what can you do with just three nails? 
And he said, have you ever heard of the man they called Jesus the Nazarene? I said, sir, you mean the one that goes about doing good, you know, like curing the sick and healing the lame and causing the blind to see? And he said, yes, that's the man. Well, today I'm going to show the world who's boss. What with these three, what with these three nails, I'm going to nail Jesus to the cross. I said, oh, no, please, sir, don't do that. I can't begin to describe how I felt as down on my knees I knelt. I said, you can't do that, please. Well, he just turned and walked away. Well, I got up and I followed him. I said, sir, I'll buy them back. But he just looked at me and grinned. Well, off in the distance, I could see the howling mob through the tears that filled my eyes. Away with him. Crucify him. I could hear their angry cries. And above all the noise and the clamor, the jeering and the laughing, the weeping and the crying, I could hear the sound of a hammer as that big Roman soldier nailed Jesus to the cross with three old rusty spikes he nailed Jesus to the cross the earth turned to darkness on that day it was the day that Jesus died and the blood flowed from his side the blood that washed away my sins high upon Golgotha's hill Jesus died for you and me. If it wasn't for the cross, where would we be? If it wasn't for the blood that he shed on Calvary, if it wasn't for God's grace and his love for all who's lost, this world would have no hope if it wasn't for the cross. The next morning, the council of the elders, both the chief priest and the teachers of the law, met together as Jesus was brought before them. They said to him, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe. Then they asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are correct in saying, I am. What further testimony do we need? They said, we have heard it ourselves from his own lips. They then brought Jesus before Pilate. But Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they were insistent. Pilate, after learning that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, sent him to Herod. But finding nothing for which to convict him, Herod sent him back to Pilate. Finally, Pilate said to Jesus' accusers, I have examined this man in your presence and have not found him guilty of any of your charges. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. He has done nothing to deserve death. Then they all shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas! Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! The shouts of the crowd eventually prevailed Pilate, and Pilate finally granted their demand. He released the one who had been imprisoned for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them as they had desired. for me, O Lord, when you cried upon your knees, how could it be, O Lord, when it flowed and swept 
As they led Jesus away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, and they laid the cross on him, making him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including many who mourned for him. When you stumbled up the road, you walked for me. When they arrived at the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals kept deriding Jesus, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God? We have been condemned justly and are getting what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness swept over the whole land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last.
The centurion, after witnessing what had happened, praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. When the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they were deeply saddened as they returned to their homes. All those who knew Jesus, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance and watched these things. Jesus Christ, who, though being in the very form of God, did not consider equality with God, something to be exploited, emptied himself, taking the very nature of a servant, being born in human likeness. Being in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and disregarded its shame.
First of all, I want to thank you all for coming so much today, and I hope that you felt like the service was as meaningful to you as we felt it in our hearts. Uh, I mean, this is what this season is all about right here today, what you just heard. Um, it could never be done without my fan fantastic, phenomenal choir who comes no matter what. And we did this in loving memory of Clayton today after 50 years of being in this choir and the dedication and perseverance and commitment, commitment, 50 years never missed unless he or Nadine were ill. And so we give it all to God and to Clayton. We sang for him today. Uh, we also could never make it without all the soloists. David and Val are so faithful. And Bella sang today and Matthew. The piano parts are very difficult on this cantata. And Matthew is extremely talented. And we wouldn't have a thing without him. So uh, please just give all of these people a round of applause, if you would, please. Stand up, Clay. Please give them thank you all a round of applause. Emma. Matthew. Girl, stand up. And my junior choir girls only practiced once and they did everything perfect and I knew they would. Give the junior choir a round of applause, please. Girls, come up here. They keep me on my toes every Wednesday, and I cannot do without these girls. Thank you so much. And finally, please give Tammy and Matthew another round of How wonderful to see the gospel, hear it, and especially to enjoy the music. Christianity has a long history of music that helps tell the story and celebrate this wonderful life we have in Christ. So if you'll stand with me today, receive the blessing and the challenge. We are more than spectators. We are participators in the life of God as we leave worship today. We go out into the mission field to shine the Christ light brightly. A well-known benediction, Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.